I'm Charlie Bright, and I'm here as uh, with uh, Kirby Dick as part of uh, Gold Derby's Beat the Experts nonfiction and documentary panel with uh, Kirby Dick, the director of Alan, the co-director of Alan V. Farrow, uh, which is nominated for seven Emmys and is currently streaming on HBO. Um, first question I wanted to ask was, what has been the most surprising reaction that you have received to this series? Uh, well, you know, you're always hopeful about this when you make a film, but it, it's really the amount of uh, sort of cultural discussion that was generated. I mean, uh, there were dozens and dozens of, uh, you know, sort of editorials, think pieces in major publications about many of the issues that were raised in the film about art v artist, about how the family court system, uh, you know, treats incest cases, about incest itself, about grooming, in addition, of course, to about the case itself, about Woody Allen and, and the accusations of, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, abuse uh, against Dylan. And so uh, it, I think it, um, you know, incest is, um, is a topic that is, it's kind of the third rail in a lot of ways. I mean, we all know it exists, but nobody wants to really, you know, face it. And, the, and this culture has not been able to face it, even though, you know, millions of children are, are being abused, you know, probably at, you know, our hundreds of thousands or millions are being abused. So I, I think what this did is it put that back in front of the culture and the culture uh, is, you know, reacting to it. So, I can't imagine that this was uh, an easy thing for the parties involved to agree to participate in. Uh, was there a specific thing that made uh, the members of the Farrow family say that they wanted to that they wanted to participate in this film? Uh, no, you're absolutely right. It it, it took uh, a lot of convincing. Um, you know, they had uh, both uh, uh, Dylan uh, Farrow and and uh, her mother uh, Mia Farrow had been. The, this whole case had been covered, actually miscovered for decades, and they had really felt the impact of that, of not being believed, of, of being blamed, actually. And, and so, um, uh, so they were very, very cautious about speaking. But, um, you, know, um, as a, you know, as you know, I made this film with Amy Ziering, and we also had uh, our producer and co-creator, Amy Hurdy. Amy Hurdy got in touch with Dylan. And Dylan said she was, you know, willing to talk, to do the interview. Um, and what was interesting about that interview is there was so much more information that came out in that interview than really the public was really unaware of. And, uh, and so obviously the next step was to go to Mia. And Mia was very, very cautious for a long, long time. And um, the only reason she eventually decided to speak was because, you know, her daughter asked her to. Um, but, uh, you know, she was, this was not something that she wanted to revisit again. Uh, she wanted to, you know, put it into her past, but, you know, because, you know, really, I, I think it's because of Dylan's courage, uh, and her willingness to step forward as she's done several times over the last six, seven years. I think that really moved me uh, to become a part of it. Uh, you've spoken quite a bit about how, um, a lot of people that, uh, had erred more on the side of either maybe not fully supporting Woody Allen, but disbelieving Mia Farrow as having really come around uh, after seeing this. Is there anyone that you know of that has, um, uh, ha who has not had their uh, opinion uh, or th their view of this whole thing swayed even after seeing this documentary that has caught you, that you feel has caught you off guard? Not really. I mean, there's, you know, I think I think it's very hard for um, anybody really who's, you know, who admires someone and, you know, Woody Allen is, you know, has achieved so much and been so important to so many film viewers, critics, etc. It's very hard to accept the fact that somebody who is maybe very informative to you, certainly an icon to you, has actually done something bad. And so, um, and, and I think we all feel that. That's not just not just not people who maybe continue to believe Woody Allen. That's myself too. I notice that vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, people. It's like, how could this person who I, you know, so respected do this? And it's it's a difficult thing. And so it doesn't surprise us really that there are still people who want to hold on to, you know, the the story that's been out there for so so long. But though, what really did 
kind of, again, that you asked about what surprised us was there were multiple film critics who, before the, uh, the film came out, were completely in Woody Allen's camp and then admitted, you know, to the public in writing that, you know, seeing the entire story, seeing Alan B. Farrell, they did a complete 180 and they looked at it from a completely different perspective. So, you know, I think it's a testament to the fact, the importance of getting the full story out and particularly getting out the survivor's perspective, because so often that is not what we, what we really hear in depth. Um, you know, whenever you're making uh, these kinds of uh, doc, uh, these kinds of documentaries, I, I think also to something like uh, from a couple of years ago on HBO, also Leaving Neverland. Um, uh, there's there's always it seems like there's always a looming threat, a looming possibility of legal action that might uh, take place in response to what's chronicled in the series. And I was wondering how much did you have to prepare for something like that in advance of something like this airing? It's a very good question. Um, I mean, most important to us is that, you know, we get everything completely right. You know, we get the truth out there. It's, it's, and so that's the most important thing. So we were very careful every step of the way to corroborate everything, you know, just to make sure that what we were putting out was accurate. But then again, we have to think about it also from a legal perspective. And in that regard, um, you know, we had multiple fact, very rigorous fact checking from within our own organization. And then it went to, to two very substantial legal teams to review. So we're really confident that everything in there is accurate. And, and you know, um, uh, so I think, you know, we did not, I mean, we were, one is always concerned that, you know, there may be some sort of blowback, retaliation. That certainly happened in the past to, to other filmmakers, to other journalists, certainly to survivors. But, you know, we feel like we're on very strong, solid legal ground. Uh, turning a bit from the process of making the movie to the actual subjects, um, do you think Dylan was more damaged? Uh, and I know you're, you're not a psychiatrist, you're, you're more, you're an observer. But do you, from your interview, from your interviews with her, do you believe that Dylan was more damaged by the abuse that she suffered, or by the failure of the system to protect her and prosecute her attacker? You know, that's a hard question to answer, but it's an important question. You know, having made so many films about sexual assault over the years, it is so often it's what you see is that people come back to you and they say the abuse was really traumatic and affected them for their whole life, but it was not being believed that was even worse. I don't know if I can really say that about Dylan. Um, could, uh, you know, I, that's really up, up, up to her really to say that. But what I can say and I, is I, I think she's a real, what she was able to do is, as an individual, it was, it was such a courageous act to come out in 2014 and talk about, you know, tell her story to the world. This was three years before Me Too, right? And she got an incredible amount of blowback for that. But I think the fact that she, that her coming forward and other people in Hollywood seeing her, seeing this courage, I think in some ways was an inspiration and had a, had a significant impact in the fact that Me Too even happened. And that actually uh, dovetails into the last question I wanted to ask you, what is the thing that, uh, most that that took you the most about Dylan in seeing her tell her story? I, you know, her courage. I think it, it was really her courage and um, the fact that she, from the very beginning, was insistent, even as a seven year old, was insistent on telling her story. And, and, um, and the, the courage at that age, the courage as an adult, you know, her continued courage. I mean, and I, again, I think it's, you know, we really have to realize that every survivor that comes forward and, and talks about their experience helps all of us and helps and not, it's, it not only gets their story out, but it, but it, it gives uh, inspiration to other people to come out. And the more people that come out, the more this society will be able to deal with issues around sexual assault and issues around incest. Well, uh, Kirby, thanks so much for uh, joining us for this discussion, and we look forward to seeing you on our panel a little bit later. Looking forward to it. Thanks.